Well, I ain't deep. Did you read yesterday's Chronicle, sir? I never read the Chronicle. But your ad, sir. Ad? What's the matter with it? Same one I've had for the last two years. Look. That Elmer Lane again? Mm -hmm. Not so. Idiot. Hello, Betty. How do, Harvey? You look a bit worried, sir. Got a right to be. See that ad of mine in yesterday's Chronicle? The he saw it. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that too much, sir. See, being a newspaper man, I would naturally notice it. Being a newspaper man? You? Didn't you know? I've been appointed correspondent for Chicago Daily Blade in this county. That's so. Well, congratulations, Harvey. That's only the beginning, sir. As soon as my uncle's estate settled, I'm going to buy the Chronicle. Good. Somebody ought to buy it. Buy the Chronicle? But I thought... See, when you buy it, do me a favor, will you? Fire that nincompoop Elmer Lane. <laughs> Oh, dear, I, I forgot to order the grocery. I'll go with you. No, no, don't bother. You, you go along and keep father company. Sure, come along, Harvey. I want to hear about that new job of yours. Oh, Betty. Elmer, Harvey Schumann's going to buy the paper. Well, I'll start delivering it this afternoon. I didn't say subscribe. I said buy. He just told father as soon as his uncle's will is settled. No. But, but I'm going to buy the Chronicle. Gosh, I've been thinking on it all the time. Well, I even spoke to Mr. Boss about it. He told me he'd sell me the whole paper, lock, stock, and barrel, for $5,000. You know, I, I told you. Gosh, 
I've been shaving up there. <laughs> I can buy it. Oh. I'll win this contest. Crutchy's radio essay contest. Elmer. What's the matter? Gosh, Betty, it's a swell idea. They're offering $5,000 for the best essay. <laughs> there it is. The best? Wrote it myself. Sometimes I wonder why I put up with you. Crunchy's radio contest. The only contest you could win, Elmer Lane, is for the dumbest man in the world. Sure, I could... Hmm? You only hadn't spent all your time and money buying silly radio sets and, and fooling with nutty contraptions and taking airplane lessons. Well, gosh, boy, Gibbon flies an airplane, and old oh, oh, McIntyre is always flying. If you want to be a good newspaper man, you have to know how to fly. Yes, if you want to be a good newspaper man, you'd better get down to earth. What are you so mad about? Oh, I'm mad because... <laughs> I'm not mad, Al. Don't you worry, Betty. Leave everything up to me. You're such a lovely fool, Al. Honest. Gosh. Gee whiz, Betty. Five o'clock. I gotta get the paper out on the street. Here. You might as well mail this silly thing. Oh. Going home, Betty? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll take you. Betty, close the door.
<laughs> when you hear the gong, it will be exactly 11.15. Gosh, I must have had China. Chicago Daily Star. Oh, is that so? What can I do for you? Well, I want to cover Claremont County. With what? Well, I... I guess you don't understand me. What I want to get at is this. You fellows need a correspondent in Claremont County, and I'm the logical man for the job. Well, not a doubt. Now, the Blade has a correspondent there, and I thought... And you're right. Here. Here's a card that will let you telegraph the news of press rate. We pay the usual press rate on all accepted copies. I suppose you write a bigger news story? Yes, sir. Why, well, last week I wrote... Well, that's fine. I'm glad to have met you, Mr. Lane. What is it, Charlie? Another batch of that boot like your fuel being settled around. Yeah, I'll send out a notice to correspondents, border and coast cities to scoop around and see if they can find out where it's coming from. Yes, sir. Bird. Bird. I've been reading about those perfume smugglers. I'd be glad to help you find them. Thank you very much. Oh, that's all right. I'd be glad if you did. Yes, sir. Eddie, you hire the most unusual people. Yeah, and I get the most unusual news, don't I? here. I had the money. I sure would help you. But I'm fresh out of dough. Oh. Certainly sorry about your top, Elmer. Oh, that's all right, Bill. Healthier without a top anyway. Oh, 
makes it go? That spells new invention. But how? It travels on the radio beam. Land at this time, Bill. I'm glad you like it. Won't you sit down? No, thanks. I've got to get back. Father doesn't know where I am. Good. I mean, <laughs> doesn't he? Let me know if you need anything, Bill. See you later, Elmer. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, she sure is a swell girl. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to announce the winner of the Big Crunchies contest. Winner of the first prize of $5,000 on the best essay on crunchies is Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Who? Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Bill! <laughs> I win! Few financiers like myself have taken over practically the entire issue. Oh dear, 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 Well, uh, just a few financiers like yourself? Well, I, I guess I could be called a financier, Carter. Maybe. Well, I don't bet you, old man. Oh, Mr. Waddington, I, I, I guess you think I was a pretty nosy fellow if I asked you to let me in on, say, a uh, hundred shares? Well, no, uh, not nosy. How would you like to take a little jaunt of my room? Oh. Hey, Doc. Can I speak to you a minute? Why, uh, certainly. Business associate. I don't suppose you remember me, but my name's Flint. Detective. Oh, yes, of course. I'm afraid you're out of business in Chicago, Doc. Well, you can't hang a man for trying. Oh, but we can get him ten years. Yeah, that's true. That, that's true. That's very true. It's now uh, 10.30, Doc. Now, if you should happen to be in Chicago at 10.30 tonight... Oh, apple time. Apple time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the Crunchies program. For the benefit of those of you who may have tuned in late, we wish to announce that the Crunchies essay contest First prize of $5,000 was won by Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Elmer Lane of Claremont, Wisconsin. Young man. My first class ticket to Claremont, Wisconsin. Yes, sir. Elmer Lane, Claremont, Wisconsin. Good morning, Mr. Watson. One, two, three, four, Pearl. Morning. Any news? Just a minute. Two, three, four. There's a financier in town. No. Financier? Yes. Jay Rutherford Waddington. Financier. Room two? Yes. He's in two?
What did you do with it, Mr. Waddington? I ran it up to 50,000. It seemed only a step then to my first million. <laughs> oh, my first million. That was a long time ago. A long time ago. Mr. Waddington, will you give me a statement for my paper? Indeed I will, young man. You may say that I am here looking over your thriving little city with view to finding suitable investments for my uh, surplus money. Investment for surplus money. Gosh, gee whiz. I've got just the thing. Bill Hilton. Bill Hilton? Yes, sir. He's an aeronaut, uh, an aviator. Uh, he's a flying engineer. Mm. He's got an airplane that flies on a radio beam. It flies by itself. Really? I'll take you out there right now. Where's your hat? Here. It's a wonderful idea, Mr. Waddington. You'll see. It's wonderful. Indeed it is. The wonder to me is that someone hasn't financed it already. With your foresight, hadn't you considered it? Well, I, I hadn't thought about it. You see, I've been thinking about buying the Claremont Chronicle. Claremont Chronicle. You mean the newspaper? Yep. My boy, I'm just a little bit disappointed in you. Should I do it? Should I do it? Well, I don't know, sir. I just like taking in partners. Then I mustn't forget that I made my first 50000 through the counsel of an older and more experienced man. Should I do it? Yes, I will. What? Take you in. With your little insignificant $5,000, you shall become a man among men. A boy, you have a rendezvous with death. <laughs> have I? Come on, let's go. When, where? First, we'll go look at the invention. Second, we'll form a company. And third, we'll make you the president. President? You deserve it, my boy. We'll make this young man Hilton the secretary. Come. It's fading away. You know I was not to blame. You have forgotten your promise that day. Your love has not been the same. I'm tired of trying to make. plane flies over here every Wednesday night exactly at 10. Mm -hmm. If one goes over at 12, too, they're probably mail planes. Nah. The mail plane runs 15 miles west of here, over Holgate. Let's sit in the plane, shall we? to bed early if he doesn't feel well. You tell him about me winning the crunchies contest? He read it in the paper. What did he say? He said you'd probably invest it in some silly idea and lose it. But I told him you were going to buy the Chronicle. Oh. Oh, you did, huh? You are, aren't you? Well, I... I... Uh, of course, I haven't got the check yet. But don't you worry, Betty. I'm going to do big things. I've got a rendezvous with destiny. 
I know what people are saying about me. They're saying that I'm just a big mouth. But I'm not. Of course you're not. Gosh, Betty. You sure look pretty in the dark. Or, I mean, I mean, you look dark. <laughs> in the moonlight. Gosh, Betty. You sure are pretty. Photographs? Pictures of the 
Marty, get him, get him in here tonight. We've got to beat the star. We'll hire an airplane. Airplane? But the only airplane in town belongs to a man who works for the star. That correspondent. Well, don't let him see him. Listen, I'll tell you what you need. Now get here. Get a dog. Yes, a dog. Dog. In basket. The veterinarian there. Right. Now, put the pictures in the top of the dog basket. Get it? I understand, sir. Okay. What's the matter? How did my dog sick? Was sick? I thought he was saying his dog was sick. Elmer! Elmer! Elmer, you gotta help me. You've got to. What's the matter, Harvey? My hand the dog broke his leg. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, Elmer, you just gotta help me. Well, Harvey, I'd like to help you, but I can't have no dog leg. Well, oh, I don't mean that. Listen, boy, there's a veterinarian in Chicago, the greatest dog surgeon in the world. I phoned the city, yes. I mean, my aunt Bertha phoned him, and he said he could set the dog's leg if we could get him there in the next three hours. Otherwise, he'll die. And you want us to find him to Chicago? Yeah, a yeah, hundred dollars. I mean, my aunt Bertha. They, uh, the veterinarian will meet you at the airfield in Chicago. Yeah, I can't fly the plane. I'll take him. But, Elmer, you've only about two hours solo. Well, it only takes two hours to fly to Chicago. It isn't worth the risk, Elmer. After all, it's only a dog. A life's a life. Even if it's a dog fly. That a boy, Elmer. I knew you'd come through. Now remember what I told you, Elmer. Don't worry, Bill. Just stand back. Stand clear. What did he tell me to do with these things? Oh, gosh. I won't use them at all. Chicago, here we come. <laughs> I hope. Doctor, I want you to know, uh... Elmer Lane. Pleased to meet you, I assure you. Why, Miss Lane, I want to congratulate you on this noble achievement. You'll probably win the award for the most humane deed of the year. Award? What award? What award? <laughs> These gentlemen here want a picture to show to the award committee. Would you mind posing for them? Hold it! Thank you, pal. Thank you. Chicago Daily Star Reporter by pictures to Daily Blade. I read it. Oh, well, that's some satisfaction. You can read it anyway. Now, answer me yes or no. Is this Elmer Lane one of our correspondents, or is he not? Yes, but it is a mere fact that... Then why is one of our correspondents carrying exclusive news pictures to our competitors? I don't know, Mr. Walters. All now, I... listen, Bird, the next time anything like this happens, I'll fire you and all your stuff. You understand? Now, that's all. Yes. But that's all. Yeah. I'm surprised that you even exist. <laughs> hmm? Get out of here before you're carried out. Gee, Mr. Bird, you look mad enough to kill. Listen. 
Don't put ideas in my head, will you? Look at that. Hmm. I've been the victim of a conspiracy. Get out. Hmm? Get out. What? Get out! All right. Have it your way. Gosh, you broke the window. I understand the county is thinking of putting him away. Is that so? Oh, hello there, Elmer. How's your Aunt Bertha? <laughs> <laughs> Think you're funny, don't you? Not as funny as you, Elmer. How long you be, Dick? I got a date. I'm practically engaged to be married, you know. Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's so. My uncle's estate's going to be settled in a couple more days. Then I'll have $10,000. $10,000 not get married on in the movie. Goodness, I should say so. Who do you marry, Mr. Gilbert? Young lady named Betty Harrison. Now, wait a minute. 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 Brady can't. Is that so? Yes, that's so. And if you were such a good newspaper man, you'd find out who killed Fuller and why. You know Elmer? Well, I got a theory of my own that I'm working on for the star. Yeah, does the star know about it? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hey, don't worry. I won't harm him. <laughs> Tell us, Elmer. What is your theory? Well, the coroner said the puller was beaten to death. He also had five bullet holes in his back. Why would they want to beat a man to death who was already shot five times? You see? <laughs> Get the idea? Now, if, if he was thrown from an automobile as the coroner says he was, who threw him ten feet away from the road? <laughs> you see? You can't answer. Can you? Sure I can. He wasn't beaten to death at all. He fell from an airplane after he was shot. Why not from the Empire State Building? Now <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and laugh, you hyenas. But remember, he who laughs last, laughs last. Mr. Lane is president of the newest enterprise in this city. Practically everyone has invested in that enterprise. Perhaps, now mind you, I say perhaps, there may come a time when you will want to profit by a similar investment. If you are entertaining such a thought, my young friend, forget it. Not only to rock. I am not one to show discrimination as a rule. But you, young man, shall not be allowed to purchase one single solitary share of that stock. Barbara. Once over, like. I told him the man wasn't shot and thrown from an automobile. He fell from an airplane. He couldn't answer that. If Harvey Schumann was so smart, he'd solve the murder and catch the criminals. Instead of poor on everybody about it. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, Bill. Oh. Hello, Betty. What's the proof? Yeah? Nice of you. You didn't have to bother. I'm pretty near well now. I know, but I... Well, you see, I, I'm head of the local Red Cross, and... Well, I'm supposed to do something. Have some fruit, Elmer? No, thanks. Oh, why don't you two get together? You tell Elmer I'll never speak to him again. She says she'll never speak to you again. I guess not. Then maybe what Harvey Schumann said was true. She says... She says maybe what Harvey Schumann said was true. Ask him what Harvey said. Uh, what? He said they were engaged. He said engaged? It's a lie. 
Well, you tell her that he was hoorawing me about it. He was hoorawing Elmer. I heard what he said. He was hoorawing Elmer because Elmer was telling him about his theory. About how that, that man Fuller got killed. I was standing over there and I heard every bit of it. Well, you tell her that was nothing to hoorah about. The man fell from an airplane. Uh, nothing man plane. Maybe it was one of those planes that goes over here every Wednesday night. Maybe it was God. You tell Elmer to me that if he stops theorizing and starts proving, he gets further. Goodbye. Bill? He said if you stop theorizing and start proving, you get further. Goodbye, Bill. Sorry. Tell her, Bill. Tell her, sweetheart. sweetheart. Uh, goodbye, sweetheart. Not you, me. Gosh, now you bungle the whole thing. Gee, well, I can... God, I don't know what you're thinking of. Oh, what are you laughing about? Gotta get to work. Right, 
we'll invest our money. following a plane with $100,000 worth of radium. You had this gun. Can you identify him? Wait, Mr. Burke. Wait a minute. Sit down. Wait. Wait. Is this the screwball hey, that Burke. had his picture in the blade? Yeah. Hold him a while, will you, Brad? Give him a good scare. I got you. Hello. Oh. Hello, Mr. Bird. <laughs> this is Elmer Lane. You're fired!
caught the perfume smuggler yet. I know, but... But I found him. Bill, Bill, tell him to be careful. Betty says to be careful. Guys, ain't he speaking to me yet? Radio beam control and I'll operate it. So you can climb up and fix the strut. You mean I, I can crawl out on the wing and fix it? Yeah. Get off this channel, you dope. But you don't understand. There's an airplane firing at me with a... Why don't you use the shotgun? Well, how could I... Wait a minute. Oh, I never thought of that. Come on, number one. Come on, number one.
our propeller. <laughs> I got him! I got him! guy on the plane. Are you sure about this? It was operating all by itself. No, sir. A new kind of radio beam idea. Okay. I 
Good old ground. Oh, good old ground. <laughs> oh, Albert! Well, darling! Oh. Whatever made you jump? Ah, it was easy once I found a ripcord. Elmer, I'm proud of you, my boy. We're all proud of Elmer, you. Elmer, I want to be among the first to congratulate you. I got 400 shares of stock. You have? Sure, see? Well, I'm sorry. We can't pay off on this, Harvey. What do you mean? Oh, look. Salt mines in North Dakota. So you're going to cheat me, are you? Well, let me tell you something, Elmer Lane. Someday the worm will turn. Yeah, well, why should he? <laughs> He's the same on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> The grateful citizens of Claremont are proud to present to you with this slight token of our esteem. <laughs> Friends? new watch. Betty, what time is it? It's time you kiss me, Elmer. 